What's up boys and girls, C Lopez back once again with another tutorialism and today I'm going to be looking at how you can use Ableton's Push 2 controller in other DAWs. In this case I'm going to be using it in Cubase 9. Okay so when I first got the push my intention was to use Ableton in rewire mode with Cubase so I could have all the awesomeness of Cubase with all the awesomeness of the push. Unfortunately though, when you use Ableton in rewire mode, none of the functions of the push are actually available. Now in a surprise move in early 2016, Ableton actually released this MIDI and display interface manual, which gets into details of how this thing actually works. So you're going to have to be at a bit of a higher pay grade than me to actually understand this thing. However, I do understand this little diagram here, and as you can see, on the left hand side where it says Ableton Live, we can see all of the things that come through the Ableton Live program and into the push. And then at the bottom we see other applications, so things that can come from other applications that can be used to control the push. And if we look on the right hand side, we can see that most of the things within the push too can be controlled from other applications. The only thing that can't be controlled unfortunately is the actual display. So we're going to have a lot of real estate at the top here that can't unfortunately be used by software other than Ableton. But as you can see, all of the important stuff can be controlled from within other applications. Okay, so let's have a look at this thing in action. Now, the first thing that I was having a little bit of problem with was actually using the push with other MIDI controllers. It is quite easy to get around this. All you need to do is make sure that all of your other MIDI controllers are turned on before you open up Cubase. Next, you want to open up Cubase. Then you want to turn on your actual push controller. And when your push controller is turned on, next we're just going to load up this software, which is called Shove. And we just click the on button as so. And you can see our push will now light up from within Cubase. So first up we have in key, which just works the same as when you work in an Ableton. You can switch which key that these pads are fixed to. We have the side panel, which acts as a mod wheel by default, controlling MIDI CC number one, but we can change that using the software. We can change the pad color of the root notes. We can also change the brightness of all of the pads. And we can change the color of the side buttons. So here I've changed it to red. We can also change the pad configuration to chromatic. And to drum pads. Now drum pads is particularly useful in Cubase, especially when we're using something like code pads. And also, of course, Groove Agent. And if you want to control the patterns in Groove Agent, simply hit the octave down button on the push. Okay, so that's what I can do. Let's take a quick look on how to set this up. So if you're on a PC, you're going to need a virtual MIDI cable. The recommended one is this one by Tobias Enriction. This is his website and the application is the second one down there, Loop MIDI. It's completely free to download, but it is up there as donationware. So uh, give how and as you please. Once you download and install it, I'd recommend setting it up so that it automatically starts up in your system tray. 
it is very small on resources, so nothing to worry about there. Under new port name, type from shove one. This is case sensitive, so small f, capital S, and click on the plus button. And that's basically all there is to it. It's set and forget. Once you've done it once, it's always going to be there. Next, obviously, you're going to need to download the shove application. You get this from silenceandsound.com and the cost is 12 US dollars. Totally worth it. I use this every single day. And my man here who did make this application does update it. The more of us to support him, the more likely he is to add more features, which is obviously more than welcome. As you can see on his website, he has tested this with Cubase, Digital Performer, Logic, Pro Tools, Reaper, Studio One and Bitwig. And also on standalone synths like Reactor. Important to note that Shove is not compatible with Push One, however. So to configure this to work in Cubase, first up you need to load up Cubase and make sure all of your other MIDI controllers are switched on. Once Cubase is loaded up, turn on the push and then open up the Shove software. Next we're going to go to Devices, Device Setup, MIDI, MIDI Port Setup. And make sure you uncheck the boxes for Ableton Push 2 and MIDI in Ableton Push 2. Both the visible columns and the all in MIDI columns. Next we want to set up the transport controller so that the play and record buttons on the push work with the Cubase. So click on transport, project synchronization setup and in machine control input check the box that says MMC slave active. And if you're just using the push exclusively, make sure an MMC input you have from shove one selected. I'm actually using the transport on my MIDI keyboard as well, which is the code 25 you can see there. Okay, that's it. It takes a couple of minutes to set up and a lifetime of fun. So this is the Lopez signing off. Peace. Oh.